welcome to the lecture on two sample is a test and two sample t test in the previous lecture we discuss about one sample test in one sample test we had only one population and we took one sample and we compared against a fixed value in two sample case we have two populations and we are going to compare the means of two populations we name them as population a and population b we name them the mean of population a as mu a and mean of population b is mu b for two sample is a test or two sample t test we have three assumptions normality both distributions should be normally distributed and the variances of population a and population b should be almost equal but nowadays we have different techniques to overcome this specific assumption and the other thing is randomness because we are comparing samples we can take the sample from population a and mean is x bar a and we are going to compare that against x bar b which is the sample mean from population b we can't compare the two population means we have to take samples but our aim is to compare two populations so those samples must be representative samples and the other thing is those uh, those must be adequate in size so those samples must be random samples let's take an example okay now we have two soft drink companies company a and company b and they have specific sugar concentration of their soft drink assume that this is the old one company a and they have maintained a particular level which we can consider as the population mean for sugar concentration and we are going to compare this with this is the new one the new soft drink companies where the population mean is mu b now we need to compare two but we can't compare the total population assume that we have 10 million soft drink bottles in the country so we can't take samples from all 10 million samples because of that we are going to take sample bottles assume that we have taken 100 samples or 100 bottles from bottle 1 to bottle 100 and from this also again bottle 1 to bottle 100 and we can take the mean of this sample where we can name as x bar a and we can name the mean of these 100 bottles as x bar b now we can compare x bar a versus x bar b if they are significantly different we can come into conclusion that mu a and mu b are different because in hypothesis testing we are interested in population means so let's take what is the null hypothesis our null hypothesis of h naught is mu a equals mu b that means they are not significantly different that does not mean that they are similar values but they are not significantly different that is our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis i told you in the previous lecture alternative hypothesis depends whether it is one tail test or two tail test in one tail case we are testing whether mu b is significantly higher or mu b is significantly lower now let's consider two tail case in two tail case we are interested whether mu b is significantly different so mu b can be significantly high or significantly low so if in two tail our alternative hypothesis is mu a does not equal to mu b next step is we need to think about our null distribution how do we draw the null distribution in one sample case we had one distribution and we plot the fixed value in that null distribution and we came into conclusion that they are significantly different but now we have null distribution for sample means of population a and we have another null distribution for sample means of population b now we can't compare these two distributions but we can do one thing what can we do let's do that 
okay now we have distribution a here null distribution and null distribution b here we have the population mean mu a here and population mean mu b here if the null hypothesis is true or if they are not significantly different ideally mu a should be equal to mu b that means difference should be equal to zero difference between population mean we can use this specific concept in order to draw null distribution let's think how to do that if so this is situation where null hypothesis is true or there's no significant difference what we can do is assume that we have taken one sample from this side we will name that as x bar a1 and we will take a sample from this side x bar b1 if they are not significantly different and if these two samples are representative samples ideally x bar a1 should be equal to x bar b1 but due to sampling variation or random error there can be slight deviation from the population mean because of that we can expect a difference which we name as d1 the difference between the first sample from population a and first sample from population b we will take another sample which we name that x bar a2 and x bar b2 from this side ideally they should be equal but due to sampling variation we will have another difference between these two means that was the second sample means from both populations we name that as d2 we take another sample which we name as x bar a3 and from this side x bar b3 ideally they should be equal if the null hypothesis is true but due to sampling variation we will have another small difference now we will take from this n number of samples which we name as x bar a n and from this side x bar b n this also should be equal we will name that this difference as d n now you can understand that if we take n number of samples from both populations we have created another variable here for the differences right we can use this variable in order to create null distribution how to do that let's see that one so now this is the difference of that one and for this one for the differences like in the null distribution lecture we will have a mean for the sampling distribution what should be the mean of these differences so this d1 to dn differences here ideally i told you if the null hypothesis is tr true or if they are not significantly different ideally mean should be zero because in null state or no difference state there's no difference between these two so ideally it should be zero so all these differences all these d1 to dn these will be what d1 may be slightly lower than zero d2 may be slightly higher than this one so like that all these these will create a normal distribution where the mean is zero why majority of those differences when in null state or no difference state will be closer to zero because there's no difference between two populations and some may have create distance bit far away from zero now this is like a null distribution so we call that it's a sampling distribution for the differences or the null distribution for the two sample cases now we can plot our rejection region here we will put our rejection region somewhere here as we discussed in the previous lectures another this one and now we can plot the difference between x bar a and x bar b in this distribution the difference between these two in this null distribution 
If this difference is somewhere in the rejection region, we will reject the null hypothesis. If it is in somewhere center, we can't reject the null hypothesis. Now you may wonder, now null distribution is made up of several samples, but here we have taken only one sample and we are going to plot this difference in this one. So how can we find out this one? I even discussed this in the previous lectures. I will recall that again. We are not going to take multiple samples in order to create the null distribution. What we do is, we take single samples like this and we are going to create standard error for this difference distribution, right? And this standard error is for the sampling distribution for difference. So, this standard error must represent the two populations. Because of that, we can't go with the routine standard error. There is specific formula for that one. So let's consider what is the formula for standard error. How to calculate the standard error? I told you standard error must be a representation from both population because you are going to create the standard error for the differences of both population. Now standard error for Z distribution I told you in the Z test one of the assumption is we assume that we know population standard deviation. So the formula is population variance or square of population standard deviation divided by the sample size of population A and variance of population B divided by the sample size of population B. In T test we make slight difference. The only difference is Instead of population standard deviation, we use sample standard deviation. So here, sample variance divided by NA and sample variance of population B divided by NB. Let's take an example. Now, we have two soft drink companies. And this is soft drink A and this is soft drink B. We need to compare population A against population B. We have taken a sample of 100 bottles and the mean is 86 and standard deviation is 8. Assume that this is concentration of sugar and here x bar b for the sample mean is 96. We we'll consider that as 90 okay and sample size b is 100 and standard deviation is 6. Now in order to proceed in the z test we have to calculate the z value and in order to proceed for t test we have to calculate the t value so for, for that we will keep this inside so i'll keep this now you can see that here we will do it here z we know that z equals the difference between two sample means a difference between x bar b minus x bar a divided by standard error. For that we need to calculate first the standard error. How to calculate the standard error? Standard error equals square root sigma a square divided by n a plus sigma b square divided by n b. This equals square root 8 square divided by 100 plus 6 square divided by 100. We don't need the same sample sizes. These sample sizes can be different. But in this example, we have similar sample sizes. Ultimately, the answer will be standard error is 1. So let's apply this standard error into the formula for Z. Right. Here, now we know that it's 90 minus 86 divided by 1 equals 4. So the Z score is 4. So this 4 is for the Z score for the differences between two samples. Now we know that there is a null distribution where the mean is 0 for the difference and we have we are interested in somewhere the rejection region. Right? Here now we need to know whether this 4 is significantly different in this null distribution. For that, we need to know what is the rejection region. Assume that in this null distribution, the rejection region of interest is 5%. 
as this is it's a distribution now we know that the two tail five percent cut off value we know that it is 1.96 minus here and 1.96 plus here so as it is five percent now we are interested in whether this calculated value is high or low than this specific table value now we know that is a calculated is higher than is a table value or this four this one four is higher than 1.96 if we plot that in the null distribution again we have mean here so this is approximately 1.96 this four should be as so one two three four so the value of b should be somewhere here four standard errors away from the mean as we have said the rejection rejection region at five percent we can conclude that there are statistical significant difference between b and a at five percent rejection region so because of that our h dot is rejected this one can be accepted the statistical significant difference between population b and population a now even though we have applied this test we know that this is the sample size is 100 we have not recruited the total population we know that t distribution approximate to z distribution when the sample size is infinity so ideally we have to apply the t test let's apply the t test same with sample same values only difference is i have put sample standard deviation instead of population standard deviation so i'm not going to do the calculations we know that standard error is one and t score will be four the only difference is where is the rejection region now I, we know that at sample size of 100 there's no much difference between the z table and t table if you go to t table and at 5% region, the rejection region will be somewhere closer to 1.97 at the degrees of freedom. In T table, in order to get this 5% rejection region, we don't need to know what is the degrees of freedom in T test. So here the degrees of freedom for two sample test is N1 plus N2 minus 2, which is 100 plus 100 minus 2 equals 198. You have to go to the t table and find out the value 198 in degrees of freedom column and find out the corresponding value in two tail test 5% rejection region. You can find out the t value. I told you how to read the t-table in t-table reading t-table lecture if you can't remember please go and watch that lecture and you will find the rejection region is somewhere closer to 1.97 that means in the t-distribution you will have 1.97 here now our z our t value is our t calculated value is 4 here also it's easy T calculated is higher than T table value, so 4 is higher than 1.97. Ultimately, we can come into conclusion that H0 is null distribution, null hypothesis is rejected. There are statistical significant difference between two populations. I hope you are clear about two sample case, two sample is a test, and two sample T test. In the next lecture, we will discuss about paired Z test and paired T test. Thank you very much.